Hello, dear friends and colleagues. I congratulate each of you for participating in the first R conference in Korea. Thank you for inviting me to give this digital talk to you. In my remaining seven minutes, I wish to talk with you about the present and future of blogging and R. I'm doing this with the goal of informing you about what the R blogosphere has to offer and also encourage, hopefully, more and more of you to start your own R blog. My name is Tal Galili and I'm the maintainer of rbloggers.com, a website which aggregates and presents R-related content from bloggers all around the web. When I asked people in Use R 2011 to raise their hands if they've ever visited R bloggers before, many of them did, and that is not surprising. As the statistics on the screen shows you, there are over 4,000 people who are interested in what bloggers has to say about R. And thankfully, there are over 200 bloggers who are supplying them with content. Both the numbers of readers and bloggers seem to be growing steadily for the past two years. Yet, if you have never visited an R blog, you might be wondering to yourself, what is there to write about R? Well, there are many things. The three major categories of things people write about are news, tutorials, and case studies. An example of news might be a new feature in a latest R distribution, or when the new R Studio came out, people wrote a lot about that. Tutorials, there are really numerous, whether it's writing about repeated measures ANOVA with R, or how to use Google Maps with R. Case studies is when people take something that they did with R in their particular domain and report about it. It could be computer-oriented like CPU and GPU trends over time, or it could be about how someone won a competition using R. As one R blogger recently wrote, going to R bloggers and reading there is just like going to a Use R conference, only one that is online and it goes on throughout the year. Now that you know a bit more of what the R blogosphere is all about, let's talk about the future. If you wish to start reading blogs, then I would like to share with you three ways in which you can help your favorite blogger. The first way is, well, to read what they write. The second thing you can do is share their writing with your friends. You can do that either by email, Twitter, Facebook, face-to-face, -face, or whatever means you use. And if you're a blogger yourself, simply by linking from a post you write to what they wrote. And lastly, communicate. Comment, say what you think about their writing, how wonderful impact it had on you. It's always wonderful for a blogger to discover that their writing has an impact. In the rest of this talk, I will deal with how to become a blogger. The first step you need to take is to choose a blogging platform. And my strong suggestion is to go with WordPress.com. WordPress.com is based on a free open source platform just like R and is very easy to get started with. All you need to do is go to the website, click the big orange button, fill out your email and website name, and then wait for an email. In the email that you will get, there would be an activation link. Just follow it, and then you have a blog. That's it. Now that your blog is up, there are four suggestions I would like to leave you with. The first one is to make sure to write content that has value. Keep your writing simple and be sure to give context to what you write. So if, for example, you write about a new version of some package you are an author of, be sure to say what that package is about and explain why the new version of the package is interesting and what it has to offer. Be sure you enhance your post by giving your R code. You can use syntax highlighting of the code. WordPress enables this feature. Just Google to see how you do it. You can just as well embed slides, video, data, GitHub. There are many services that allow you to do these things. Use them. Also, do not bother that much with posting regularly. I've heard from many, many people who do not start blogging because they cannot commit to regular posting. But it is fine these days to write whenever you want. Do not let it stop you. People can simply subscribe to your email and be updated. Once a year is fine. Twice a month is fine. Whatever works for you is fine. Just start writing. And lastly, be social with your blog. 
be sure to link to other bloggers, comment back to your readers, do whatever you can to make the experience of your blog as interactive with your readership and with your ecosystem as possible. Now that you have a blog and some content, the next step is to market your blog. It is very important and natural for us to want other people to know about what we have to say. And there are many ways of doing that. But honestly, for the R community, I would simply suggest to go and add your blog to rbloggers.com. Or if you write in a non-English language, you can add it to rbloggers.com slash L-A-N-G. Your content will be sent to over 4,000 people who are interested to read what you have to say. It is much easier today than two years ago to get your word out to the R community, and this service is open to all new R bloggers as long as your content is relevant and good. If you find it more comfortable for you to read or write in Korean than in English, there is also a subsection of R bloggers called R bloggers slash lang hyphen Korean, and there you can subscribe your Korean language blog and read about other R bloggers who write in Korean language. So to conclude, what is the future of the R blogosphere? I see two interesting points. The first obvious one is that in the future there would be more R bloggers and more readers to have and read their content. The second minor point but interesting one is that I hope to see more interactive data visualization created using R and made in a way that you can embed it inside a website or a blog. I've seen many beginnings of projects enabling this feature. I hope to see them grow and mature further in the next few years. That is it. I would like to say again that it was my honor to give this presentation to you today. I express my deep thanks to Chel He Lee, I hope I say his name right, who is the host of this conference. I wish you a very successful conference in Korea and to have many more like it. This is all thanks to each and every one of you. Congratulations. I hope to see you online. Goodbye for now.